Have you ever gotten a girl pregnant? You no. Like, like uh, fertile sperm? I bet you do. I bet you do, Alex. Do I Do I have fertile sperm? <laughs> I bet you do. I had fertile sperm at eight. You're listening to Hypothetically with Will Noonan. Will Noonan. It's been a, it's been a few weeks. Yeah. I've been checking. So many weeks. Yeah. I'm just fucking not good about it. Yeah, really. I'm gonna. Be, I always say every time I'm like a husband that beats women. I'm like, I'm gonna be these. better. <laughs> Smart move. Yeah. Do you know what I wish I knew how to turn off is that H like live photos on my iPhone. Oh, Do you I ever know. go through photos and you realize like everyone is like a little two yeah, second it's, it's video really annoying. of you and all your friends like for like a second. And, like, chicks will send them to me, too, thinking they're sending me, like, a selfie. Right. And if you, like, you'll notice it's live, and you almost have, like, a moment where you're like, do I even want to see? Right. Do I even want to watch the, yeah, the yeah, video? Because yeah. maybe they probably think they just sent you a pic, and then sometimes you can see them, like, making. What, what's the weirdest thing you've been sent on accident? Oh, my God. On accident? Yeah. Because <laughs> I've been sent a lot of weird things intentionally. Uh, like, what, what, or in general, what's, like, a weird thing that you got when you saw it? You're like, holy shit. Uh, people send me like nudes and dick pics all like not all the time, but nice. enough that it's like I can never feel I never feel totally safe right. from not seeing one. Yeah, yeah. Especially when it first, 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 like when Snapchat first, first, first came sure. out, it was like dick pics for days. And I've got a few, like, not a ton. Yeah, it's so bad. Like I feel bad. I feel bad for chicks uh, sometimes because that is like an assault. If I got a, a yeah, for sure. If I got a pussy pic, right, that was the same distance angle as a dick pic i would also probably not like that too i don't like i don't like it by itself i want to when it's not attached to a body yeah it's just a weird thing it's weird to be like here's my part like right. here's, here's the part I, I i totally get it if you have like a huge monster dick and you want to put, sure. put like <laughs> put like a cigarette lighter next to it yeah. for scale so you can be like that's what that's what i'm but packing. even that i've there's if you ever well let me ask you this have you ever had a girl ask for a dick pic? Yes, but it's weird, right? Yeah, it's weird, and it's usually not like a sober girl or like a. Actually, that's not true. I've dated like like I've dated normal girls who who would want that. Sure, but it's usually when they're like hammered. Yeah, yeah. But they let that part of themselves free. There's I've had one <laughs> girl I was I wouldn't even know what you would call it I was hanging out with. Mm-hmm. And she used to send me like really dirty snaps. I mean, so when I say dirty, I mean like m- like masturbating videos and stuff like That's that. That's awesome. And I was like, all right, cool. But then she kept wanting me to send her stuff, and I was like, I'm not going to send you a dick yeah. pic. And then she would get mad. She's like, <laughs> oh, what? You just get to get my stuff, and I don't get to have yours. It I'm is like, kind of like I didn't. I mean, you offered it. I didn't make a request. Yeah, is that you? Yeah, I think. No, I think it's good. Yeah, I don't know what that. I can. I'll be hold, conscious of it. Let me switch this real quick. All right, cool. Uh, just in case, it might be the mic. But I feel like this the cable came a tad loose and I put it back. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna hold on for a second. Hold on. This might be good. Check, check. Yeah, that sounds great. So perfect. I've uh, yeah, I've sent them and I've sent. Them. Oh, it's this. It's this cord's fucked up too. I got two fucked up cords. That's oh. all right. I can do it like this. Um, you've you've sent dick pics. Oh yeah. Face in like all kinds of fucked up. No, you know, not like my asshole, but I've sent like right. I've sent a lot of like. Body, That's a body really picks. specific request, a butthole pick. That's never, like never been asked. I don't think anybody wants that. I'm sure gay guys want that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that could make sense. Let me see that butthole. I'm gonna be yeah. fucking later. Right. Uh, <laughs> you right? No, of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, I met maybe. Uh, I don't know. But I uh, I've sent I've sent a bunch of like the like chest and abs mm, yeah and for uh, sure you have that perfect angle where that. like like you can like lean into it so your abs like it's like the perfect yeah. level of definition if you're like flexing yeah we're know. a fucking ridiculous generation that, oh of course uh, that this is what we know how like we know camera angles like like uh so you Lord and you and Rings. i are old millennials we're you're what 32 33 sure yeah right. <laughs> i'm 30 yeah, I'm like I'm I'm 35. Okay, so, but, but I'm 82. Is the which the year I was born is like the first year, right? But you and I remember in school writing notes to girls. Oh fuck yeah! Like that was that's all gone. I know. I mean, why would you write someone a note? Oh, just the way we used to kill time is gone too. Like remember just like kicking rocks with your buddies? Yeah, like, totally. Like, the whole like just staying outside of a 7-Eleven parking lot 
for an, a night. Right. Or sitting like at. Those are the best, man. Those are some of the best times. Dude, in me my and my life. buddies in high school used to just sit, at, go to Wawa. Yeah. Get some subs. Just ch- is yeah. there Wawa in Boston? I don't remember. No. It's like outside of the city. They have Wawa. Philly, I think you yeah. gotta go. Like you gotta get down. But to you're Philly. familiar. They don't yeah. even have them in New York. I had really. To go, I was in. The first time I had a Wawa was like a couple of years ago. I was in Scranton or, or Philly or something. I was sure. like, all the pro wrestlers down there, are like they never shut the fuck up about Wawa. It's so great, man. They all love it. It was pretty good. I I got coffee though, and that was like not the. No. Not the thing to get there. <laughs> yeah, no, you go for the sandwiches. Yeah, you gotta go for his name. Well, that was also like the first time I saw one of those like you can order it yourself on the computer Love things. That shit. And it was like that in itself when I was fifteen was so exciting. They got a they got a whole McDonald's here now that's like that. Like uh, They have it in LA too. And uh it's pretty sweet, man. It's they dope, still- but I also when I see that I just think like there's even no, more jobs gone. Yeah, more jobs, I guess that Have people- you seen those delivery drones? I've seen, like, the videos, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They have a thing now I saw, I read, too, where Amazon Prime, uh, I believe it's Amazon Prime, they have a thing where you can get packages delivered into the trunk of your car. Whoa. So, like, certain newer car models have, like, a, there's, like, a way, like, there's, like, a a code or whatever the signal is, so, which does sound convenient, but I don't, that freaks me out, man. Yeah. I think I'd probably go for that. Someone told me the, like, I have the new iPhone and someone, it scans your face. Sure. You have the X. (laughs) Yeah. And it scans your face, and every time you open it, like it's pretty, right. it's pretty great to not have to unlock it all the time. But right. a lot of people were like, "I would never do that." Like my brother was like, "I would never do that." And it's funny because I'm normally pretty paranoid in that way. But I was sure. like, "If someone wants to get your face now, they can just get they it. They can fucking get right. it. You're like, no, get you're it, right. Give it to them or don't give it to them." And also, it doesn't open when I have like my sunglasses on, so it's not like some amazing uh, okay. like. It's not an amazingly. Like, um, See, my fear with what's happening in the technology. future is like we're gonna get to a point where like your face is like you just your face is attached to like all your like banks, bank, bank right? So and, you, and you just go somewhere and it just looks at your face and it charges your account, right? But what's gonna happen is like let's say you like get an Uber, it's gonna be like a self-driving Uber, scans your face, you hop in the back, and then it's gonna be like, whoop. Oh, Mr. Noonan looks like you have a warrant out for your arrest for not paying a parking ticket or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just drive 100%. you straight to the station. And people go, oh, yeah, 100%. And probably this seat will, like, cuff you. Right. Do you watch Black station. Mirror? Yeah, absolutely. So that's where I, I watch. I, I love to smoke and watch Black Mirror, and oh, then yeah. I go out these weird rabbit holes. You just go deep into your head, of, into fear. Yeah. All right, so before we fucking... Alex Gatlin is my guest today. We well, never yeah. introduced you. I'm, oh, gonna put, that's right. I'm probably yeah. going to put all that in. Sure. Great. Alex yeah, yeah. clearly gets what this podcast is about, which is just rambling. Dude, it's an about, honor to be here, honestly. Oh, please. See, I really mean that. Lamont Price, I hope you're listening. <laughs> he, la- <laughs> he laughs when I say things are an honor. He always makes fun of me. He's like, nothing we do is an honor. I'm like, dude, things are well, an t- honor. Well, I'll let you finish your intro, then I'll tell you why. Yeah. Alex Gatlin, good friend of mine. He's an L.A. comic now. He used to be a Boston comic. Uh, and he's here on the podcast, and and he gets the he, you listen to the podcast, yes. and uh, you've you know been my friend for years, and he's in my apartment right now. So nice Dude. to see you, buddy. Oh yeah, thanks for having me back. Back to what we were saying. So I remember when I so I got here, um, November of 2014. Yeah. And right when I was getting into the scene, I was like going to different spots, and I remember I w- the scene got much gayer that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it in the forest. Right. I was like, ooh, the homosexual. Vi-. No, I just but, but I but. I started I'm bringing back homophobia. Uh, listen, man, it's in now. <laughs> it, was, it was retro. I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. We do need a new phobia. To, no, this is dumb. Let's go back. 2014. Yeah. All right. Anyway, yeah. Um, and I was trying to like get into the Boston scene more, and I was trying to get a feel for the scene. And I don't remember how I came. somebody mentioned it or I heard about your podcast. And yeah. <laughs> the I don't def- the definitive. Boston comedy. Uh, and I, no, I started like, lit, I think it was like, more like in, sometime in 2015. I really got into it. But sure. uh, I mean, yeah. That, well, oh, sorry. I wanted no, to. No, no, just saying. I remember listening because I was like, oh, like, oh, I'm, I'm the kind of guy, if I'm going to go into like figure out the Boston scene, I'm going to research all the. Yeah, who well. are the headliners? What are the projects they have going on? Maybe I'll like pick up tips on. Yeah, yeah. And I remember also one thing I really liked. Um, I was at King's and I remember I met you at King's and. Um, you were like one of the first people who was of like a certain level of clout in the scene that didn't act like it. Like uh, you were just like you were just cool with everybody nice. right away. Like there's some people I met, doesn't matter who, but they there was very clearly like a oh yeah, like you're some open micer. I'm not gonna bother to get to know who you are. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you were not like that, and I was really appreciated. It I never wanted to be like that, and also like I think it part of that is because I started in New York where it's a bigger totally scene, and like you know guys become. 
you're immediately working like almost your second day of comedy. You're like, oh, there's Jim Gaffigan in the back of the club because like right. people are doing guesties. Of and course. Show, there's shows every hour and you're kind of like crossing paths. And I never forgot like like Goldman was like a huge role model for me in that way because he was just that he's that way. Right. And it's not like it, it was like. I don't know. It's not like something I have to try that hard to do anyway because it's like we're all fucking comics and 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 there's a lot you can always learn from from a new comic. It's kind of like Of course. You're like, "Yeah, man, this shit is so fun cuz new comics are just like like I met they're this so, dude. They're so they're so like full of hope. Yeah, and I met this dude JJ at a at a or I think his name was JJ. It was something like super upbeat happy guy name and he was I think it was his like second. He's like, "I've been doing this for 2 weeks." And I was like, "Dude, this guy he reminds me of myself, man. I, I've been doing it 11 years now, and I sometimes forget, like, how amazing. Right. Just, I, I remember, like, I used to sit and look at uh, the sign. There was, like, a neon sign that said comedy at, at one of the clubs, and I would stare at it and just be like, like, that's a sign that says comedy. Like, someone right. made that. Some A guy had to bend that neon. Like, that fucking sign means, like, I'm in a comedy club right now, and, like, this shit is real. And I used to just, like... I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Like of little course. things. I, you know, I remember uh, you told this anecdote on a previous episode. I, I, I th- correct me if I'm getting this wrong, but you used to like have like fantasies or daydreams of like being in the audience of a show, and there's like, uh, oh, well, we 100%. need somebody to. St- Anybody here got some jokes? One hundred percent. Right, and uh, and I didn't. By the way, still do that. I caught myself. <laughs> I caught myself doing that at something like a week ago, and I was like, "Do you really think this is like?" I was somewhere watching. It'll come to me, but I was right. watching something. And I was like, maybe I was just in my head. I was like, have ten minutes ready, just right. in case. There is one. You know who Brad Williams is? Uh, yeah. Do you know how yeah. he got like into comedy? No. This th- this is that story. It's unreal. So he was at the Improv. He's told us on a bunch of podcasts. Carlos Mencia is on stage doing some jokes <laughs> about midgets. Wait, Carlos Mencia called a midget out on from the crowd. On so stage? he made some jokes. Shocker. Yeah, he made some the like, jokes. Somebody's like, "Oh shit, Brad! What? Like, here we have one right here." And so he's like, "Holy fuck!" He brings him on stage. Yeah. And he, and Brad was kind of had some good like zingers to like respond to him. And then Carlos, I guess, said to the effect of, like, hey, you're pretty funny, man. I tell you what, like, maybe I don't know if it was after the show or whatever. He had a, said, come back in a couple weeks, and I'll let you do a few minutes on stage. And then that happened. And Brad said, like, he was, like, writing jokes like, like crazy wow. going to mics. And then he actually had, like, a pretty good three minutes for being new. And Carlos was like, dude, like, I like you. I, like, I want to have you start opening for me. I mean, in a midget, too, that's so great. Like, right. Yeah. You know. And then he dropped out of USC, and now he's got, you it was know. a short drop. <laughs> Ew. I, but that's like the one time that's ever happened. But you probably. know what? I actually had like I my dream kind of right. came, kind of was like like years before I actually did comedy. Right. I was at a comedy club and this famous comic Sandy Kane is fam- She's like famous in New York. Like sure. On that scene, she's nuts. And she uh, she gives me. I'm sitting in the front row. And she gives me a camera, like one of those disposable like. <laughs> right. 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 Hands it to me. She's like, "Take pictures of me. I don't have any pictures of me on stage. Take pictures of me while I'm doing my act, right?" I'm taking pictures. Cool. She's like, "Hey, you're not taking pictures." She's like, "Use it as like a bit." Hey, you're not taking pictures. She right, right, right. Me. So one of her jokes bombs, and yeah. I take the c- and she's wearing a dress, and one of the jokes bombs, and I put the camera just pointing up her skirt, and I just <laughs> take, take a flash picture. Yeah, and it like kills. That's right? hilarious. And I'm like 19 and yeah. shit faced, like at this comedy sure. show, and. She she like like she was happy. I was happy. It was like a great moment, right? So then at, this was at Stand Up New York, so uh, or New York Comedy Club, sorry, on, on uh, downtown. So mm-hmm. so we're like, she's like at the bar. I go to the bar. I'm like, hey, I hope that was okay. She's like, no, it was actually the best part of the set. Nice. And then I'm like, I've actually always wanted to do comedy. And then she gets Al Martin's right there, who like owns all those clubs and shit. Yeah. She's like, Al, this is this guy's funny. He wants to do comedy. He's like, he actually goes like. Well, you got any stuff or da da da? And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, fuck, like, I'm Holy getting shit, a big yeah. opportunity right here, and I have Jack, and I'm 19, and I'm shit faced. Yeah. They were literally gonna let me go on. Holy for crap! Like five minutes right then, that and I never happened. And I went, nah. It, I think it was like, you know, it was probably like really late at night. It was probably like a weeknight. It was probably like in their side room. It wasn't uh, some big yeah, like. It, it wasn't still. a huge show I was at. Right. But I remember thinking like. uh I said no too. Like I was like I was hammered, and I was like I don't really have jokes, and this is like for professionals, and I was an actor, right. and so I had enough respect. No, that's smart because a lot of people would probably be like oh, I could do this, yeah, and then they yeah. would make a fool of themselves. And ba- at, during that time, I was seeing it, like I was right. going out and watching it constantly. Think about this: like, what if you did say yes, 
and you bombed so bad that you never did stand up again. I thought about that. And you'd too. be like in some terrible cubicle selling insurance or some I've shit. I've thought about it like a million times. And what's also funny, I was such a piece of shit back then that like yeah. I just told like my friends that I did go on. <laughs> 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 and I was like, oh, I went on, I killed, it was awesome. Maybe I'll yeah. do that one day. Like, that's just the right. kind of guy I was back then. I get like, it. I was just a drunk liar. Uh, that's but, so funny. And then I remember that ended up, that club, though, ended up being the first real comedy club yeah. that I ever did. As do you think maybe on some level, subconsciously, you were telling people so that you had to do it? Yeah, I think so. I right. think I was doing something like that. Or I was, I wanted them to say... You make a great comedian. Like that's what I was like, kind of fishing right, for. Right, right. Because I did have. You, yeah, when you're. Uh, yeah, I remember that when you're so new, yeah. you're just terrified. Like, can I do this? Am I really funny? And those you need yeah. you need those little moments of like, yeah, keep going, man. Oh, hundred percent. Actually, like I burned almost a gr- like my high school group of friends from those early days because they just came to all right. those shitty shows, and it's like and they were like, "Will we get it enough?" Yeah, it's like in the, I did that too, it's man. Like a bummer too, you know. It's like, dude, like. Some of these shows are terrible, right? You know, yeah. Because I did, I lived in LA before I came out here in 2014. Yeah, you're born, you're born there, right? No, th- kind. Okay, so yeah, this is the full. My dad grew up in LA. Oh, okay. So we would visit a lot in the summertime. So I didn't grow up there like my childhood, but I was there a lot, a lot. as a kid. Yeah. And currently, my little brother, my grandpa, two aunts, my un- uncle, and a bunch of cousins all live in LA. Okay. So like, my whole side of the family is from out there. And when I and when I moved to Boston, I said I was from LA because that's where I've been living yeah, most yeah. of my adult life. So people in Boston always think I grew up there. Grew up there, but yeah. I did kind of like I lived there from 22 to when I moved here at 24. Yeah, um, or rather um, 26. <laughs> I can't do math. So four years. Yeah, yeah. And I was there a lot as a kid, so I sort of have. Where else were? Where else? DC you? area. Oh, that's where okay. I. That's where I went. Like, and I went to high Mar- school in DC. Yeah, and stuff? I went oh. to high school in North Carolina actually. Wow. What yeah. The? You you have like the. I've been all over. You have the living situations of like an NBA rookie. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to put it. <laughs> You're like yep. in all these like places where like, yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool though. So yeah, you have man. an eclectic. Uh, that's a little bit of like. A little bit of southeast, a little bit of northeast. I lived in Israel for six months. What was that like? Uh, well, I went, so I got accepted into Maryland for the spring semester of my freshman year. On a basketball scholarship. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> so I had six, I had a semester where I could have gone to like community college or something, but I was like, that sounds lame. I want to go abroad, and my parents are really cool. And they're like, yeah, if you go to a school abroad, you know, you can do that. So I went to the semester at Tel Aviv University. Wow. But... It was amazing, but the problem was I was so young that I didn't have the maturity to like appreciate what I should have been doing there. Yeah. So really, so when I got to Israel, that's funny, right? This is so. That's like, a lot of life is like that. I think. Oh, absolutely. When I yeah. got there, I was so into the fact that like I was eighteen, I could drink anywhere yeah. I want, and I learned very quickly if you're American. A lot of times, because so many like American tour groups go there. And if you go to, like, certain nightclub promoters, you can get, like, deals and all kinds of crap. Yeah. So I figured out pretty quick if I pretended to be, like, a group organizer from an American group, I could start getting deals at clubs. <laughs> and then I would – and then I would – so what I would do is I would, like, go to different – like, I would call up different it nightclubs. It sounds like you found your true inner Jew. And, I really did, like, 100%. <laughs> and I would, like, call up different nightclubs. Like, hey, what's up? I got this uh, birthright group. That's, like, the trip that a lot of Jewish people do yeah. um, when they travel, whatever. And I'd be like, hey, can you give me some deals? And then I would, like, negotiate them back and forth. And I'd be, like, set up, you know, okay, you guys are going to cut the line. We'll have a table for you, and we'll get, we'll give you, like, your first round half off or something. And then, or just some kind of whatever I could finagle. That's, that's, uh, that's slick, man. Yeah. And then, so what I would do is I would start going to, like, the people in my, like, program, my abroad program. And I was like, hey, if you guys want to come out, Shavata has his party tonight. We <laughs> so got a great deal. then you actually kind of became Yeah. A- <laughs> I turned, and then I would, like... And this is that when <laughs> when I was eighteen, this That's to me funny. there was nothing cooler than being like the club guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because then I would like see this huge line outside. I walk up. I would like, hey, just follow me. You're follow like AJ me. Soprano. And uh, do you ever watch that? Do you ever watch uh, Sopranos? I, I, off and on. He has a season where he's like the cool guy at the nightclub who like gets people in. Right. That's it. Models. I, at that age, models. it feels pretty cool. So I would like walk up to the door and I was like, hey, what's up? Uh, it's Ofer here. Ofer, hey, it's Alex, and this is my group. And he'd be like, my friend, come in, come in. And we would like cut the line. Holy people shit. would be like. Whoa, like Alex actually. So then I was just obsessed with that, which was fun. And I kind of learned some of stuff, how like promoting works. And then when I went, I was in a frat at Maryland and I used to promote club parties there too. So I learned that world. Yeah, you're a great promoter here in Boston. Thanks, man. I just, that's how I kind of picked it up. But um, that was fun. But I just wish I had done more like traveling to seeing like historic sites (laughs) and taking in the culture. That's how it goes. Like, I, I, I wish, like, even, even just college. 
I just wish I learned. I just wish I paid better attention to yeah. a lot of the <laughs> stuff. You know, I was you the same and me way, both, man. chasing chicks like. It was actually when I was like twenty five. What was 26. your scene in college? Like, what were you? Well, we I went to just an acting conservatory, okay. and I was passionate right, about I that. So this, it was. Yeah. I did. I did actually focus most. I did like care most of the time. Yeah, most of the time. But I still think I had opportunities, and I had like teachers at my disposal that I could have gotten extra shit from. But I was just like, I get it, you know. But even now in comedy, I do that sometimes too. It's just sometimes you gotta take like the bat. You know, it's just like that thing with the. The thing earlier with the me not doing that set, maybe that could have led to me never doing comedy. It's like you gotta yeah, figure 100%. out. You gotta figure out things on your own. Do you have a memory of like the first time you were you were on stage and you're like, wow, I'm like really doing it now? Yeah, I think I, I think I had a bunch of moments like that. Uh, in like the same year, I was like, all right, I'm figuring this out this year. I can yeah. tell. Uh. I've had a lot of like I'm I'm good for those I'm I'm easy for like an on stage epiphany I go right. I go to a very like zen spot up sure, there and yeah I I, I, <laughs> I do it all the time I always come off and have like sometimes I'll if I have like a problem I'll figure it out when I'm up there or I'll come off and I'll think of something but yeah I can remember specifically like probably around seven years in like which is a long fucking time but yeah so somewhere around there I remember like my heart rate. <laughs> and stuff like wasn't changing <laughs> whether totally. I when I was yeah. on stage off stage killing bombing it just had be it had finally become a little bit of like normal a normal part right, of my right. life I remember that feeling I remember the feeling of like your batting average gets high enough that you just stop being like what if i bomb tonight <laughs> yeah and then you just you know they're like whatever dude yeah like or I, even if you bomb like i used to think if i got like if i had one punchline that didn't hit i would like my whole set was ruined and i would like be panicking in my head yeah 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 all that shit like you don't all the things you learn is i mean but i'm still i don't think it'll ever end i think right. i and i think when i'm 50 i'm gonna be up there like damn i should have been doing this all this thing all along but mm. but it's like i was uh I don't know. I've been thinking lately, like it's almost like too much. Like lately, I've been drinking like too much coffee before I go on stage. Sure. I'm like I'm almost like too fucking chill sometimes. Oh, I get what you're like, saying. Like I caught myself like I was doing a set somewhere and I like straight up like clear. <laughs> I like cleared my throat and was like, <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> like I was just like, like into the mic. Yeah, like I was at home. Like yeah. and I was like, all right, this now we're getting like a little too chill up here. Sure. Uh, but yeah, I can remember just a zillion different. I remember one time in the opposite direction being on stage and being like i need to work like i need to do a lot of work here oh okay <laughs> right i right, can right. remember watching chris fleming i remember a big time moment watching chris fleming at the comedy studio and being like i need to really think about telling these jokes with more than just like my mouth <laughs> like I, totally I used to stand, yeah yeah i used to stand still and just deliver uh and if you gotta be such a good fucking writer for that to work so right. i was just like Watching him, I was yeah. I was some guys entertain in a different type of way, right? I feel like like Todd Barry is one of those guys where he can pull that off. Yeah, and it's also even if you can pull it off, I don't know if it's something I'd ever want to do. Like yeah, I think it's, it's, it's more not your style. It's more fun to. Well, you're really good also with like like the bit where it's the you do the girl reading that da na 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 like there's a whole you got to be animated to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just well, my friend, my best friend, like from growing up, Nick Ramage was always like. He's been with me like this whole journey. Yeah, you know? that's great. That's amazing, right? From us being high school kids and him being like, I used to always be like, I'm going to be this actor. I'm going to do these movies. I'm going to be this big actor. And he was like my one friend, my best friend, who would be like, you should do stand-up comedy, Noonan. Like, that's Noonan, you should do comedy. Like, he used to say this since high school, right? Right. And him and my other friend, Dante. And I used, I'd kind of be like, I, I, to me, that was just like being like, you should play for the Red Sox. Well, I'd be like, I don't right. have those skills. Yeah, not, I get what you're saying. Like, right. I was like, I'm not, I didn't know how... Totally. I was like, I don't know Bill Burr. I don't know like any of those people. Right. It, was just... it seems so daunting. Yeah. Like, that was a big part of it when I before I came to Boston when I was just dabbling up my because when I was in LA, I did mics here and there. I did a handful of bringers. Yeah. But I never. It always felt like I was standing at the base of a mountain with no idea how to climb up. Yeah. Cause, so I get what you're saying. Where you just yeah. What appealed to me about it because I'd always been an actor, which is truly an actor's like you have a postcard of the mountain. <laughs> Right, and you're like, right. I hope I get to be at the bottom. You can't even of this. look at the bottom, yeah, right? Can, yeah. So like, I I was 
one of the things about stand up that appealed to me was that you could just go fucking do it. Like that is exactly yeah. I'm, I understand completely what you're saying because you can't do that like with a lot of things. Right. You can't be like like you can be a comic and start your own bar show. You can't like b- do a, be a bar show actor. No. <laughs> I mean that would just be so preposterous. No, you can't. You can't go act. You can get a couple of your friends together and like work sure. on a scene in a room. What's that? That right. that feels like insanity. I mean, the closest I guess is like you can shoot your own sketches now. And yeah, get them and that's true. You could be a pretty good filmmaker now, probably. There's some guys here doing decent stuff. But that doesn't appeal. Trace Gatos. Yeah, yeah like, those dudes are awesome. Yeah, yeah. There's it's like good production quality. Oh, fucking hundred yeah. percent. I I work with them a lot, and I'm like, you guys are better than a lot of quote you know professional. Dude, I told uh, Rob. He even though Luke came from that world, Luke, uh, one of the. Luke and Rob grew up together, but Luke came from like he's a professional filmmaker before. Oh, got it. So he, that's I think he brings sure, like, a lot of sure. that. Sure, sure. Well, I, t- I I did Rob show on Friday, and I told him like there's festivals they could submit their sketches to. Oh yeah, yeah. Like they I should have to sign a release right now for one of. Them, oh, nice for yeah, one yeah. of their things. They do they do shit like just everyone like is too lazy or scared to do. Like I was, yeah. we were filming in a courthouse. That's awesome. And I'm like, how'd you guys get this? And they were like, we wrote. 72 courthouses in Whoa, Massachusetts. And that's this, ing- that's and, awesome. And this is the one that said yes. And I'm like, that's kind of shit no one else does. Right. And that's the reason why we're all here. And they had 50, 50 fucking people there. And they don't waste your time. Like, you're there, you shoot, and you are you leave and you pass, like, two other comics on their way in to shoot their it's shit. It's a professional shoot, yeah. They know what they're doing. The little bit of, like, on-camera stuff I've done. It's like, they yeah, have call times. And yeah. It's, it's like, oh, this is how it really works. Yeah, just because it's... It's so, uh, you know, it's time is money, as people say. Dude, and it's absolutely. true. Uh, what do you think? I meant to ask you when you were talking about yeah. Israel. I was listening to This American Life, and uh, sure. they had a thing. Did you hear it? It was like Ira Glass, Jewish guy, and he says Jew, Jews, you know, the Jews, the Jew, like, right, right. In 1940, the Jews, whatever. And a member of his staff was like, Ira. And. It's the Jewish people. You don't say no, Jew. No, that's... And then he goes, I'm Jewish. Right. Uh, yeah. And, like, my mom is, like, you know, the most Jewish woman ever. Right. And I've never, like, been told this in my life. And and then he's kind of... He does say, this is ridiculous. This yeah. is millennials. But then at the end, he goes, but I guess if this is the way it is now, it's the way it is now. So I'm now saying... And I was like, no, Ira Glass. Okay, that's, so like, where you fucked up. To me, saying... Like, if someone says, Alex Gatlin is a Jew, I'd be like, that is an accurate statement about me. Yes. <laughs> but they're like, oh, he's a Jew. Uh, it's uh, like yeah. t- it's like saying if someone's gay or black or whatever. It's just an accurate description Every, of everything them. In com Everything in joking, yeah. I think, is about that. About what you just said. Like, like, that's why some guys can get away with insanely fucked up crowd work. Of course, yeah. And other guys can't. So, you know what I mean? Like, some people are just... N- they know, like I've said some fucked up things to people, but yeah. they they're looking into my eyes and they know that I'm not right. like I'm not saying it with like this venom. I think we're what what I I hope I feel like we are starting to hit the end of our patience on outrage culture. Big time. Like I think people are really starting to get like, dude, whatever. Yeah. Enough. Michelle Wolf today. Was yeah. Per- everybody's freaking out on either end. Of- about. Uh, it's on my list. Oh, nice. Well, I, what it, we haven't even gotten. We don't. I mean, this is just for basis, but I figured we had to talk about this. Cause yeah, let's do it. It's a big topic in comedy. What today. do you think? Uh, I think, first of all, all right. Here's what I think. I like Michelle Wool. Mm-hmm. I don't know her at all, but I've heard like when she. I remember when she first started. I started hearing about her like immediately. People were like, "There's this woman named Michelle Wolf who's like a year into comedy. She's really funny. Like." As funny as anyone. Yeah. And I remember being like, ah, I hate those people. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I, was yeah, like, I hate those people, especially right. like a good looking chick. Like, uh, yeah. But it is what it is. Like, I saw one of her videos. I was like, she's fucking funny. Yeah. Then I saw her. I had never seen her, though. And then I, my brother took me to see Chris Rock for my birthday, and she opened. Oh, yeah. And it was it was good shit. Especially. It's the like, Garden? No, uh, here in Boston at the Wang. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. And, uh,. It's always great when you see a comedy show in a place that sounds like a euphemism for right, dick. Yeah. And uh it was a great show all all the way through, but uh and she was great. And it was funny to see a comic at that level like still have to deal with like people coming in to see Chris Rock and yeah, sit of course. down and shit and, and uh but she had some great shit. And uh yeah, she's not one of my favorite like sure, comics yeah. or anything. 
but I was watching. Uh, but I never, I never think that correspondence thing is very funny. No, personally, it's not. like it's that shit is so. Those jokes are kind of easy to write. I think totally. They're just more. It's like the Daily Show is easy to write. I think. Yeah, it's like. You just report the redi- most ridiculous news stories of the day and go like, "Really?" into the yeah, camera. Yeah. <laughs> that's such an accurate way to describe. I never thought about it like that, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> that's a hundred. It's like, that's, and this is what we're doing that's now. All the <laughs> Daily Show. Is. <laughs> that's all that show is. Is like, I mean, John Stewart was a little bit, I think, new, more nuanced and yeah. had some. He he had the years of just stand. She's up. a correspondent from Daily Show, right? Isn't she involved with them somehow? I, I, I maybe. I don't. I, honestly, okay, I don't, I'm yeah. not a big. I'm not a watcher of that show, right. but I like her. Sure. And uh, but I but what I watched, like I thought, was pretty fucking funny. Like the yeah. clips I saw was funny. What bothers me, what I took from today, bothered me the most is that Dennis Miller is mad, and Dennis Miller is like, yeah, I thought he was trying to kind of like. It sounded to me like basically rally like. The troops. Yeah, I saw that tweet. So he, I think he basically said like it wasn't funny. I'm gonna research Michelle and write mean tweets in, yeah. in a day or and two. And to that, I want, I want, like, I feel like we should like fucking take Dennis Miller's yeah. b- gun and badge, like comedy gun and badge, like. Fuck I I am 100 percent in your camp. Like, <laughs> dude, I don't, I don't maybe know if you said this on your podcast, but somebody who's like been in the game for a while and understands pointed out everybody's against us. We got club bookers that try to fuck oh, it's us. Probably Jimmy Dunn. We got maybe yeah. We got <laughs> sounds like we him. got <laughs> a- crowds that heckle or shows that nobody even wants to be at. Yeah, there's all these people that are against us. As comics, we have to be on in, in support oh, no, of that, each other. That sounds like me. Actually. Yeah, I think like I say that. there's already so many enemies of us. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we're supposed. Why to would be... we not? Look out for each other. No, that is. I've said that on this thing a thousand. It sounds times. like something you would say. It's fucking. Well, it's fucking. It's true. It's true. We're a small community. Chris Rock said it. He's like, there's less people on Earth that there's more people that can dunk basketballs than can do stand up comedy. That's so funny. There's right, there, yeah. And there's more people getting paid to play basketball you know what? than there are getting paid to do comedy. No matter how good your fucking jokes are, if somebody has a sweet dunk video, they're gonna get more views than <laughs> they're you. They're gonna get more views. Yeah. But it, it's a small like community, man. Totally. Even with even people who even including people who don't do it full time. Yeah. That that like population got a lot bigger in the past couple right. of years. But I just wonder, like, what is Dennis Miller's point? Like, why? Why? What does he expect to do? With I think that all com- he wants to do, and it's a problem that these dudes get. These dudes, when they get into the yeah. news, when they when they start to think of themselves as like journalists and like serious news yeah. people, they get they become slaves to that to that audience that they that right. they already have. They just yeah. want to keep fucking like tickling. Look at Owen Benjamin. Yeah. I mean, he went off the deep end on his own, right? But I know he's a he's a friend of mine too. I haven't. I don't want to. Yeah. No, I no, no, no. I haven't talked to him in a long. I haven't because I, I think, think Owen's I think very he, funny. I think he thinks. I think he thinks I fucking kind of because I, t- I, t- I basically like he went through some shit on Twitter and I sent him like a message. I was like, hey, like, uh, I was like, honestly, I muted you because like it's sh- it was a little too much and yeah. I think he was pissed. Right. But I was just like, I was going through my whole like, dude, I'm like not even like watching the news. I'm like not looking at Reddit. I was in kind right. of like trying to. Just live my life and be and ignore the first few months of the yeah. Trump administration. I just the comics beef between comics is just that's but not to to uh, finish yeah, yeah, yeah. what you were trying to say. I think Owen is in a little bit of that bind right now. Like he right. wants, he loves where he's at, and it's I've felt like I do the Kumia Network, and when you're on there, you f- like a lot of the people who are most vocal on Twitter are like sure. super conservative. Yeah. And they're great fans and a lot of a lot of my biggest fans are conservative and we have like a gentle back and forth. Right. Cuz right. I don't think I'm like Larry Lefty either. I'm kind of just like what I'm I'm not even a super political dude. Right. But there is like you can feel this thing sometimes when you're when you're talking to those people you're like yeah. if I just went all the way there, if I decided to be like a right wing motherfucker, right. I'd be bigger. Like I'd be yeah, more fake. totally. Well, also your <laughs> act. I mean, there's nothing in your act that that I can remember that like points in either direction. The only thing is like, oh, Will loves pot, but other than that, <laughs> yeah. So he's definitely not going to be. Well, anti-drug. I mean, just the yeah. fact that I'm from Boston, I think probably lets you know the fact that I smoke weed and I live in Boston. I'm sure. from Boston. I'm most likely not a 
a Republican. Right. I'm probably a Democrat who voted. And my brother's gay. So those are three reasons. And I have a mother and a sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who are women. So right. those are three reasons why I wouldn't like. But, you know, I like, I try not to get too into it, especially on this podcast. Like, I've, I've talked a lot of, like, you know, I don't want, it's for especially for a while, it's mellowed down a little bit. For a while, it's like everywhere. It's like Trump, Trump, Trump. Yeah. You're like trying to figure out how to beat a level on a video game. And like the kid in the YouTube tutorials, like, you know, press A twice and fuck Trump. And you know what I mean? Like it was e- fucking everywhere you looked. So yeah, I, man. And it's just like I that's a big pet peeve. I don't have any real strong opinions about it. I'm not a fan of Trump. I don't yeah. hate him as much as a lot of people do. I'm just kind of like, I don't even care anymore. Yeah. But I feel like there's definitely I think it's I, I've <sighs> I've. I've begun to hate him just because well, what do you hate about him? I just hate that. I hate what's happened to like my life. Sure. Because of him. Yeah. I hate the effect he's had on people and I have like a people job. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. Totally. <laughs> like I people are like the ocean to me and I'm like a fisherman. So it's like I was You're saying in I terms was, of like stand up <laughs> like if I were a fisherman, the people are my ocean as a stand up. So it was like the waters can be calm or they can be stormy. And totally. a lot of people yeah. were kind of like Trump's going to be great for comedy because dude, I fucking hate when people say that because shit. it's just going to fucking, you know, like push the envelope and we're going to all have so much material. It's like, yeah, great. The fucking yeah, like, what society's I... falling apart. What a great what great. Material. I hate when like. And I know they don't know any better, but like when when civilians say like, "Oh, this is going to give you some great stuff to write about," it's I like, know. "No, I have, I don't need, I have stuff to write about. Yeah. I don't need to write about the president." Like, no, and also there's going to be four hundred fucking guys doing that, yeah. and it's the jokes become hack in five seconds, and the president's always doing some new shit. Right. It's like, why do you want to do comedy that way? See, I feel like, like sports comedy. What's yeah? It's like the Celtics won last it, night. It might as well be the same thing. It does, I always felt that way. The the jokes age the same. That's so funny. Like I used, I've written jokes about sports because you're watching sports all the time. Sure, especially around here is a temptation to do it, and then you do it, and then you're like a month later, you're like that joke's not funny anymore. Why did I fucking waste two or three yeah. nights of my life tightening it up? Sure, is that mic fucking up? My, it's no, it's probably good. just the bottom. Of I keep anyway. thinking it's because it was going in and out, but I think we're good. I, I can hear myself in the headphones. So we're All good. Right, yeah, if, yeah, you'll you'll know if it cuts out. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I think I do. I did find it uh, with the Michelle Wolf stuff. I found it like I just found it funny how a, a lot of the people who are so the, I hate social justice. I hate it. Yeah, I fucking same hate way. it. I made but a new policy. This is the same shit. I made a new policy. If somebody is posting stuff that I don't want to see, I just unfo- I stay friends with them, but I just immediately unfollow them, yeah. like on Facebook, because yeah. I've I've lost track. There's so many comics that in person they're lovely to be around. We have yeah. great rapport. We just chill. We don't get into politics. We just talk. It's nice. We hang at a show. But then their online presence is just so unlikable. I know. I have not had Facebook for like two years, maybe th- maybe two nice. and a half. Do you have now. a fan page? Yeah, that, 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 that's yeah. it. And right. It's like almost a ghost town. Like I don't like it messages sit there for a week and right. I don't even like to fuck with that. I just I mean shit is posted there constantly from Instagram and Twitter, but I but but I don't like it. And and it's funny, man. Those 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 groups of comedians. Like I was, I don't think this guy would care. But I don't want to like yeah, sure. I don't want to say his name. But okay. I, but he was he doesn't live in the city, but he lives like around. Yep. But he's not always in the city because he lives kind of far away, like an hour away. Okay. And I'm like, we were doing a gig in Hartford. He wasn't even on the gig. He was just hanging. And I'm talking to him, and he started to get, like, like kind of aggro and kind of, like, upset. And he's yeah. talking about Boston comedies, and he's talking about, like, everyone thinks they fucking blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I was like, whoa. I was like, who, what, who and what are you even fucking talking about right now? Right. And then I realized it was like all because of this like Facebook group, you know? Uh-huh. And I was like, uh, and this guy's a good comic and stuff. So I didn't want to be like condescending because he knows his shit. I get it. But I just wanted to be like, that's not even close to like what real fuck, like what's going on about right. comedy. Like that's just a, I don't even know what that is. It's like a, it's like a bathroom wall, like of graffiti. <laughs> yeah, it's like, weird, and it's weird how some people think it has so much clout. It has zero. And I've really made it. I mean, I really at this point only use Facebook to like promote a show that I might be on. Yeah. Or like stay in touch with like high school buddies. Like. Yeah, I mean, I lost some of that. 
I lost some of that, but I don't miss that. I'm, I'm not. I mean, real <laughs> friends, you'll make an effort and call them. Yeah. Or write a long email or something. It's more like the French friends where it's like, oh, so and so got married. Yeah. And like, you know, I don't. It, that's nuts. I still like to see it. It's like kind of nice. I'm not as much of an international man as you. Alex. Yeah, but I've lived in a lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking jet Have you ever lived up. outside of Boston? I mean, I know. You, oh yeah, you lived in New York. You lived, lived in, in York, L.A. I lived in New York for nine years. Wow. Yeah. I lived in L.A. for one. Interesting. Uh, Van Nuys. I remember. I heard an episode you talked about, but it was so long Studio ago. City like and Van it was pre-smartphones, right? Oh fuck yeah! I mean, it was pre. I had a cell phone. Yeah. I had like a flip phone. How did uh, you find gigs? I mean, I wasn't even doing stand-up yet. Oh right, you were just acting. I was acting. So, yeah. I was, but I was going to auditions. Uh, two two auditions a day, which would take all day. Right, and uh, it was uh, and sure. I, I booked like one voiceover job the whole time I was out there. Yeah, and uh, it was rough. I had some fun. I had some fun, and I enjoyed. It was funny. Like right, I had made a decision to leave. I told my landlord I wasn't going to renew the lease. I had sure ordered my tickets home, but I had like this month left. Right, and that ended up being like the month where I was like, shit. Now I. F- feel like I finally found some cool places I like. Do you think that's because you knew you were leaving? You kind of had this new maybe, attitude? Maybe. That was weird, though. That was, like, right before. That was, like, literally months before I started doing stand-up when I left LA. Interesting. So I think I was, and I had <laughs> I had an agent. Uh, I met with my friend's agent out there, and yeah. he was like, you ever think about doing stand-up comedy? I was, like, getting messages from the universe. Yeah, hell yeah. And right. And then, and then I went to New York and did, got it. Still trying to be an actor, and I got a right. karaoke job, and like a couple more people were like, "When right. can I see you do stand up comedy?" I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna do stand up comedy." And then when I was did like, you I'm not back? such a fucking idiot that I don't get it. Like, right? <laughs> That's cool, man. See, mine was just I just happened to go into a hookah bar one night, and they had an open mic, and I just saw. I was like, because I didn't even know what open mics were. Like, I yeah, only had yeah. been to like That's a hookah a hookah com- bar in America in L A. in L A. Yeah. And, like, I just knew of, like, the comedy store and stuff like that. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even know how to, like, think about finding stuff. So I saw that they were doing open mic comedy, and I just, like, talked to the guy. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, it's full this week. Come back next week, and you can try it. And then I went back the next week, completely bombed it up. But I was like, oh, like, this is how it works now. <laughs> and then I just started, like, hey, how do you find other mics? And comics told me about the website. My first so. one was pretty – my first set ever. Not bad. Really? Not bad. Nice. But – Quickly got bad, like right, right away. <laughs> like for like, I had like a good set at an open mic first time out. They also introduced me as first time. Sure, I was okay. nervous. Yeah. Uh, but then I was on. I barked that weekend. I did a weekend immediately, but right. it was like. So then it was like once I started to like try and flex and stuff, it was fucking disgusting. I made those mistakes too. Yeah, of uh, course. Sam Morell is like on on all those. I think he was there the first day I did comedy. And really? Like, yeah. It's just fucking. Dude is so, f- and he was funny then. He's great. He's funny now, and he was like the, the fu- one of the funnier dudes then. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we were all open mic. You guys look like, like you could be cousins. <laughs> I, I told him, he, I like. We had a good time the last time we hung out. I don't. I don't. We liked. You know, it's weird being adult friends, right? It's like we're, we're two grown men who live in different cities. Yeah. And even when I lived there, we just hung out at comedy. It's not like we were like going to baseball games together. And sure. Stuff. So like sometimes I text them. Um, or something, and uh, or on Twitter. Usually, if he's like a career thing, yeah. And uh, I get we, weird anxieties about that. If someone's a bigger comic than me, and we have like a good friend rapport. I never want to feel like I'm too like, hey, let's hang out. Yeah, you know. And we work together usually like once once a year. That's or something, great, man. So. Yeah, but it was weird. It's a, uh, it's just weird. Like people grow, pe- you grow up. You know what I mean? Like I totally. like last time I hung out with him, I was like, I felt like we kind of just cared about different things. That's how I feel with most of my college friends now. Like a lot of them live in New York, and I like hung out with some of them this past week. Yeah, and it was like nice, but they're like buying houses and having kids. Yeah, and see, I I just can't. You know. A lot of the New York guys like it. Well, part of living in New York is like griping about the industry, right? And it's just like they don't care. I got like a th- I got like a two second like tolerance for griping about the industry. Right. Just, well, I mean, <laughs> except for on my own podcast, <laughs> where if I can go an hour doing it yeah. by myself, but it's like. Not even in that way. Like I don't like talking. Like this guy sucks. He shouldn't have this. Like or that. This club sucks. Dude, blah, I blah, blah, I blah. have no patience for that shit. I know. Because it's, it's like, even if there was a way to objectively measure this, what would it matter? I know. Like, if, why do you care so much? Just work harder. Yeah, and not even like just just keep working. Yeah, like, let it go. Like, like that's what I always say. It's like it's gonna come to you or it won't. Like yeah. no one, even like a someone like Michelle Wolf, who's a fairly new 
act who's like a who's a woman kind of to the world seemingly came out of nowhere right she was doing great comedy and someone saw it yeah that's all that's all like it's not this people think there's like a secret system out there yeah, where know. you uh because it's just one of those things where there's just so th- there's it's it's way more people fighting for the amount of resources that it, than exist 100 percent, and it's so you create realities in your head I think of, coming from acting you're if you do acting first, you're going to have a thicker skin about that. Because sure. you're like, hey, man, there's 20 bajillion actors in the world. 30 are working on any given day. So did you think like, oh, I'm going to become an actor and then that'll get me into stand-up faster? No, I just figured I would never do stand-up. I was just like, oh, I'll just be okay. a huge fan of stand-up my whole life. I was like, maybe one day I'll write like a funny book. Right. Or a screenplay or something. You still could. Still could. I still could. You working on it? Yeah, I am. Oh, really? That's why I want to write books. Yeah. What's the book going to be about? I, I think wanna, we talked about this the other yeah, night. Yeah, we talked about it at the, yeah, 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 at yeah. the bar. I don't want to give away sure. the plot of the book, but I got a couple things like that. I would, I would, Sometimes I daydream. Yeah. Alex, I dig I'll it. share something with you right now. Let's you hear it. Sometimes I daydream about like, I love it. like a quiet life, like writing in, in the... Like, like living up in Maine like or something? Up, like, but really like more like... I'd still like to keep Boston nearby, but like somewhere like Western Mass okay. maybe. Yeah. Like just off in a, in a wooded area. It's like maybe... Maybe totally alone. Maybe with a slave wife. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's back to the good old sometimes days. Sometimes I right? do, like especially when I'm been driving to a lot of gigs. Somewhere. Sure. I was like, it would be nice to just produce from home yeah. for a little while. Right. I get it. Uh, but I don't know. That'd be saving because you could do a book tour. I know. I'm trying to get into uh, maybe some articles, like some 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 short pieces. Yeah. But I got a. Uh, I got like a ton. Um, and it's just like starting with comedy. I'm like sure. chicken shit to like, right, right, right. I'm like chicken shit to uh, email them to a bunch of the people. And it's they're giving me like so, a lot. Sometimes I'll meet people and they're like, "You ever write something? Send it to me, man. Like we'll publish it. Like because yeah. they're just cool and they like some shit I do, you know. And I'm like, sure. Okay. And, Especially now, I mean, it's like anything you can do to help build your brand. Right. Yeah. I mean, do you, that's for you. I mean, you've got the podcast. You've got kind of because you're like you do a lot of stuff that's sort of at the low level of professional wrestling. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was that's in, sick, man. I was in punk bands growing up, and what'd you play? I played guitar. All right. And uh, punk bands like punk, Bad Religion or punk bands like Blink One Eighty Two. See, to me, both of those would kind of be similar. Well, Blink is more like pop punky. Well, all right. And then when Bad I was, Religion is like anth- like counterculture. I played in both types of bands, okay. but when I was first getting into playing in bands i was playing like a punk fucking like sure, rancid like, like okay yeah like leather like the misfits and, and like, stuff like that yeah like let like guys i my parents wouldn't let that shit go yeah but other kids they had like blue hair and, and mohawks and stuff my parents were like you can you can wear your dad's old army boots if you right want. And that's like it when I was in middle school, I was super into new metal, like Limp Bizkit, Korn, really? Marilyn Manson. And Patty I used, loves that. And I used to, I still like that stuff. Yeah, yeah, well, and I, I used good. to wear those like big Jinko jeans. You remember oh, those? fuck yeah, those are coming back. Oh my you God. See it? You, dude, <laughs> no, I didn't know that. They're coming back as far as, I think it might be ironic, it might not be, but sure. they're like going, Jinko, someone bought that company because it was just gone. Right, right, right. And they bought that brand and, and they're putting them out and apparently like in Japan it's already 100% back. That's so funny. So that means in a couple years. There we go. I should have saved my Jinko jeans. You're going to be dancing you're going to be dancing with some chick at some LA nightclub and right. she, she fucking, you'll get a full boner she can't see. <laughs> Yeah, Did dude. you rollerblade? You do anything like that? I, um, not really. I skateboarded a little bit, yeah. but I was always really bad at that stuff. So I'm one of those people. Stand up aside. I, I imagine you were a hairy little kid. Were you a hairy kid? You know what's funny <laughs> is oh, this. I actually really was. <laughs> um, this is not a joke. I have a bit I used to do about this. I don't do as much anymore. But oh yeah, you had a mustache. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I actually went through puberty at eight. It was called. It's called precocious puberty. It happens to like precocious. One, that's yeah. what it's called. It happens to like one hey, percent of kids. I'm puberty. No, seriously. Yeah, I've seen those kids. You see those kids. I, so I had um a, not like this thick, but like a mustache yeah. at eight years old, and then my mom noticed it, and then she checked and she saw I had pubic hair too. Holy shit! So she took me to the doctor, and the doctors told my parents basically it was like um, I think my bones thought I was like thirteen. Whoa! When I was eight. That's weird. So I had to take all these pills and or not uh, shots, rather injections. I Holy had, shit! I had to take a, a monthly injection of this stuff called Lupron, which is supposed to slow down the puberty, and then a daily injection of like growth hormone, <laughs> but not HGH. Like what? What? Um, was like, the, was there an option to just let it ride? Yes, but 
they, they told my family I would likely be five feet, five foot one. Oh. So it was, and now I'm, I'm like almost five ten, and my dad is like five five. My mom's like five even. So wow. I, I hit the jackpot. Yeah, yeah. So you feel like it was a good decision. Yeah, absolutely. Until you grow like a weird tumor on that exact spot. I've been okay so far. <laughs> yeah, but I, I was. So That's I, crazy. I've always Isn't been it hairy. tough. The decisions parents have to make. Like, it was one of my biggest fears. That must have been suf- such a tough decision for your parents to make, dude. Oh, of course. Like, And no one tells you, like, oh, by the way, <laughs> this baby you have yeah. right now, when he's eight, he might grow pubes, and you will just won't know what to do. Like, right. he'll, he'll, The doctor will be like, well, you have options. And That's the doctor scary. like told my parents, like, look, we're going to try this concoction of like injections. This is what we think is going to happen. Whoa. But it's like, it's. but if you don't do it, is almost guaranteed to be like five feet tall as a grown man. So you're a very hairy guy now. Too, yeah, man. yeah, pretty. Do you hairy. uh, you ever gotten a girl pregnant? You're no, like, like uh, fertile sperm. I bet you do. I bet you do, Alex. Do I? Do I have fertile sperm? <laughs> I bet you do. I had fertile sperm at eight. <laughs> that was part of my bit. Yeah, because my body thought I was thirteen, and like when you're thirteen, <laughs> you're that's when you're I gotta first isolate ready to that go. Audio fifty thirty. I had, I had. What did you just say? I had fertile sperm fertile at eight years sperm old. At yeah. eight. So I was I had this bit it was like where it's like imagine you get was, like boners and like rubbing them out at eight. Um, I don't remember when I first started jerking off. I have I don't remember not an age where I was jerking off. You know what I mean? Like whoa, really? Yeah. <laughs> You're like in the sandbox, like with the Tonka truck. Like, I, I mean, I definitely wasn't like, like full man. on, but I remember like being like, man, touching my wiener feels awesome. <laughs> like, well, but I do. Um, sure does. Sure does. Yeah. But I remember even at like. In kindergarten, like seeing girls, like who were other kindergartners, and being like, oh, "I want to hug all of them." I remember that. I you remember know? that. I yeah. never had the cooties phase. I no, always I, loved I, girls. I remember like trying to charm girls, like right. kindergarten, first grade, like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm at school now, but like at home, like I do what I want. Like I, I don't have experience <laughs> that. Like being a bad I don't boy, have yeah. a bedtime. Like, yeah. I remember like telling chicks that. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. My dad's pretty hairy. We're hairy dudes. Most a lot yeah, of Jewish yeah. men are hairy in general. Yeah, well, you have like the, you have like the Israeli soldier Jew look. Yeah, yeah, you're, I know what you're saying. I think I remember you, I used to introduce you that, or you had a joke like that, right? Maybe or something. Yeah, you have like the. Well, because there's there's like the like, Woody Allen, Larry David looking guys. Yeah. And I'm like on the other end. Yeah, Goldman's probably on that end. So. Yeah, Goldman. Who's another guy? There's, but you don't really have like, I mean, traditionally, you have like mm-hmm. a more of an Eastern European kind of. Uh, yeah, I always say I you look could play like, like a you could play like a Russian bodyguard in pe- a movie or something. Yeah, I always say I look like I'm white once removed. You know, like <laughs> people. You know what's interesting? There's gonna be people listening to this who like don't know what you look like. Oh, so right. I wonder what they're. Imagining. You guys can follow me on Instagram <laughs> at go. Alex Gatlin. No, um, per- no, yeah, perfect time. Yeah, yeah, spell yeah. that too. Well, it'll be no, you don't have to. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be in the thing. thing. But uh, you know what's funny in LA, especially there's it's such a diverse city, and like people always think I'm from a different group that's not theirs. Like, so, for example, like, Persian people know I'm not Persian. Yeah. They think, I, oh, are you Armenian? I was going to say And Armenian. Armenians think I'm, they know I'm not Armenian, they think I might be Persian. So it's like that, like, Greek, Spanish, Turkish, like, anything that's yeah. one of those, like, you're not totally not white, yeah, but what you're kind of white. You? Yeah. They always think I'm like that. That's a good thing to be. Yeah, it's good for, I haven't I done a lot of casting stuff, but it does, you know. I used to buy weed from a Armenian dude when I lived in L.A. Yeah. He uh, made... He had an overnight job making dentures. That's so like, funny. Like taking what? Taking the teeth. He had 20 not grills, dentures. Dentures. Like you know, it was like twenty-one teeth, I think, or something. Sure. He had sat in a room, had twenty-one buckets, one fill, each filled with each tooth, and he had gums, and he would sit there and fucking one by That's one, crazy, glue the teeth in, and he also he'd be like, just come by, man, like come by while I'm here, and. I'll sell you weed and like it's cool, man. Like he was like yeah, this yeah. weird dude. And he was also the first guy I ever saw who had uh, video screens in his headsets. And he picks me and my buddy up and he <laughs> drove us to the club, showing porno on the headsets oh the whole God. time. And I remember being like, dude, like I didn't even know back then if people could right. see what we were watching. Yeah, but yeah. I yeah. felt like they could, and now I know they could. Uh, what a weird thing! You know, like he's a weird oh, dude. Get a quick one out before the show. I know, and you'd go buy weed from this dude, and they're just yeah. like fake fake teeth everywhere and like fucking dentures hanging to dry from like the ceiling and yeah. shit. It was like something out of a serial killer movie and then one You know what that sounds like? You ever watch It's Always Sunny? Not really. Uh, okay, because like Danny DeVito's First character. First couple seasons I watched. I could see Danny DeVito's character Frank being that guy. Like oh, he yeah. does all these weird things. Like Yeah, and he was like a young, he was like 25 Armenian dude and Interesting. he used to always go this Humble's, he'd sell us Humble County. Oh yeah, 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 sure. Like, Humble's, Humble's. He's Funny. Like, Humble's from Humble's Yeah. Yeah. 
LA's a weird city. I met a lot of it's so weird. I, dude. I worked at the Hustler store on Sunset when yeah. I lived out there, and uh, they have like porn star signings, right? And th- that was like an introduction to a, an interesting world, dude. I do shows sometimes that have these like low level. I, I don't even say low level. Just some girls who do like Brazzers and Naughty America, Whoa, yeah. and they're doing comedy spots. And I asked one of them. I was like, "Why are you doing this?" Because I like I could tell she's yeah not a comic. And she said that part of why they do it is because some of them make money like hosting at nightclubs or hosting yeah. at, like strip clubs and stuff. So it like builds their like hosting skills. Wow, good for them. So they're just like, yeah, why not? You know? And they just message somebody with a bar show. It's they're like, like, I do comedy, so it's just lower myself a little bit. <laughs> just one way to get re- disrespected by society. <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah. Wow. Is there a lot of that in LA? Like people just. Doing comedy as like kind of a side, <sighs> so much now more else. than ever, and I think it's two kinds it's of people hot right now. Yeah, well, okay. There's, I think there's three kinds of people doing stand up. People who love just like you and me and most comics we are friends with yeah. who just love comedy, right? Then there's the people who I think enjoy comedy, but they have like an agenda to push. They look at uh, themselves, the SJW types, or they're like the more like the 4chan guys who they're not, they don't even love comedy. They just want to like troll the left. Wow, that's and big out there too, huh? It's getting there to an extent. And then there's the people, and this is the biggest one that I see out there um, that kind of is like getting sp- decent spots. People who have huge followings on Snapchat yeah. or Instagram stuff, and they, they're just feeling their, you know, it's like the Vine guys. Some of them are really going for yeah. it, doing their comedy stuff. Um, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm like, the, I'm the choice opener in Boston for that type right, of act. Yeah. I do it all the time. I just opened for two guys from YouTube uh, a week ago. And, How was uh, it? You know, it's, it's, it's always weird, man. It's yeah. always weird because it's this weird unspoken thing where it's kind of like they give me a lot of respect. Always. Sure. They're always like, I totally think almost all the time. They're always like, hey, thanks for doing Yeah. <laughs> but it's. It's one of those things where I feel it makes me feel good because it's like one of those ball don't lie scenarios. It's right. like, dude, like we're both here in front of a crowd and you're super famous and they're all your fans and I'm just the opener and I'm funnier than you. Yeah. It's so like, that's, that feels good. I think that's a great attitude. And people in L.A. who get like upset, the comics who are like, oh, all these stupid uh, Instagram stars are taking up space. And I'd say to them, I was like, OK, if so if you really think of yourself as a real comic, if you cannot bury that guy on stage, you yeah. have no room to talk. That's true. That is true. It should be it should be a piece of cake for you if if what you're saying is accurate. It's true. I see I see that guy's point too though. It, when when it comes to like the paid club gigs. It no, sucks. I get it. But at the end of the day, it's like why well, get upset? Because I'm how the it guy. Is. I'm the type of headliner. All right, like club has fifty two paid weekends a year. Right. That's fifty two guys. I'm usually like fifty fifty one or fifty two. I'm not very famous. I just got some radio stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, internet radio stuff. Um, but I'm good for 45, and and everyone like you know I got a good reputation, so I make the 52. Sure. But just fucking barely. Right. And when a guy like Stevo decides to do stand up, or a guy like uh, yeah. you know, some guy from Vine who can I get sell, what you're sell a shitload of tickets decides to do stand up, it's like 50, 51, 52. Where are the guys that go? Because yeah, it it's sucks. Like, why would you have? Of course. I, I don't blame them. They get, it's a business. If you can yeah. sell out. Like with a guy, sell out with the guy, but it's it is a little bit choking comedy, I think, because it's like it's I guess people it's, go it's, to clubs and the show sucks. They don't come back to clubs, whether right. it's a Vine guy or and he's famous or whatever. That's a good point, you know. But I think like we're at the point now where whoever you are, even if stand up is your first thing, you have to have a couple other things going on to yeah. get a well, following. Yeah, well, people want that. Like if people see you and love your stand up, they expect you to have a podcast. Oh or s- yeah, or something. Like, and I think now I'm in this weird spot where a lot of people come and see me once a year for the past couple of years, past two or three years, and it's like yeah, the new enthusiasts to, are loyal, man. Yeah, and they listen to the podcast when they're not coming to shows, sure. and it's like they know what's going on, and I and some of them have written to me, and I write back, and it's like this whole it's become this whole thing now where it's kind of like really cool, man. You know, I go, I they show up at things, and, uh... What are you, like, 10 years in now? 11, this is year 11. 11. Nice, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Congrats. January. Thanks, man. That's yeah. fucking nuts. I gotta go in about 10 minutes. You got Catch it. my bus to New York. Is there anything you wanted to hit before you go? Uh, I'll give you a ride to uh, South Station, so you don't have to... Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. thanks, man. That's so nice of you. You know what? It's no problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hear that? <laughs> what a fucking guy. <laughs> Will Newton. Um... Anytime I'm being recorded for public <laughs> broadcast, I'm totally a sweetie. Hey, let's talk about that. 
Yeah. Is there anyth- any anything you ever did that you regret? A time you were a dick or anything like that? And you, yeah. And you, uh, um, anything a- like? Because I've done a ton of stuff like that, and it's always good. Sometimes I always go like, let me let me tell you, I made this mistake for you, and you don't have to make it. Absolutely. Fortunately, I think for the most part with stand up, I didn't make a lot of mistakes. No, t- and you were a good guy too. While you were here in Boston. Thanks, man. Good well, rep. Liked you. Thank you. And Except I think for Ron John, people really liked you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think part of that was coming out of the bit I had done of the L.A. scene yeah. and seeing a lot of the, like, hyper insecure, I'm going to flex harder than I need to. to sh- like, Fuck yeah. And I was like, just be authentic, man. Just hang out. Be cool. Statistically, yeah. none of us are going to really make it. So just yeah. enjoy the process. And so and I and I just was kind of raised to be like that in general. Yeah. Um, But I definitely By a five foot. Eight and five right, yeah. woman. Yeah, but they're great. Shout out to Bob and Arlene <laughs> Gellin. They're wonderful. Are they uh, still together? Yeah, yeah, Fuck still together. Yeah. My dad just retired. So. You'd be so much bigger if they were divorced, bro. <laughs> Why? Because that'd be you'd like. Be, you'd be at the White House Correspondence Center. Like, right, yeah. Bro. I don't know. I always say, my parents are still married, too. And yeah. Sometimes I wonder, I'm like, is my childhood too good? Or? I, I have the same thing. Like, I didn't have any. I've never. I had problems. Had any, <laughs> I mean, I've had like insecurities and like this, you know, things yeah. that like I've had some pretty ba- bad breakups. Oh um, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, you know, I mean, I moved I here. Bet. Me too. Yeah, I I moved here for a girl, and then we ended up splitting up a year and a half later. Ah, uh, so is that know. the thing you regret? Um, I I certainly don't regret anything that happened. I definitely do. I don't have any real major life regrets, but I definitely have things that I was like, now I need to reassess yeah. how I operate. Like I I fall. I haven't been in a relationship in over two years, and I buy like choice i'm like i need to pump the brakes on this because yeah, i would yeah. i had three back-to-back like really really serious, serious intense yeah. girlfriends yeah fuck that and i was like and i went like all in and that was all pre stand once i got really into stand-up that kind of became my like new i treated it in a way like it's I, a relationship I, it, it, and it's a little corny it, but i, I like i write I to her that, every day i said that to someone the other day i was like i'm married to the lady comedy yeah, b- pretty much and it's takes some it's it becomes like a girlfriend when you have a real girlfriend and she's constantly mm-hmm. comedy is you're like, I really, she's the one, <laughs> she's the one yeah. I really love. Dude, and one of the <laughs> things is like, I've dated a few girls uh, since my last serious girlfriend, and a lot of times I ended up meeting them at a show where like, early on they saw yeah. me do comedy, they were so excited, like, wow, because especially if you don't see a lot of comedy, 100%. they think it's so, they, they think I'm so much cooler than I am. Of course. Right? Especially if I kill in a show. I think a bass player, when I see a chick bass player in a band, I'm like, I'm in love. Yeah, dude. I'm in love with her. You know what, I like, I, I, um, I started taking uh, Krav Maga, it's like the self-defense oh, fuck, classes, yeah, yeah. and a lot of the instructors are women, and like, when I see how, be- like, they're black belts, it kind of turns me on. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Like I just want to say, you're not a very L.A. guy, but the only L.A. thing is, I just started taking Krav Maga. Right, I know, yeah. <laughs> but I'm a douche. I run 10Ks, but I like, you know, <laughs> we're du- douche, douche recognized douche. Yeah, man. Well, it's one of those things when I turned 30, I wanted a new challenge for myself. No, I'm fully, believe me, I'm actually trying to get a friend of mine. I'm like, you need to do something yeah. with because she's like in a rut. I'm like, this will like running or something fucking Something outside of comedy, outside of totally. drinking and boozing and partying, like just something fucking random and weird. Because your whole life you're like learning. You're in school. Absolutely. You're learning. You're going to college. You're putting yourself in like new situations. And then you get into this certain point of life where you're comfortable in your 30s yeah. and you know how you feel about things. You know what Absolutely. foods you like. You know what it is. And you, you could, you're at a crossroads where if you wanted to, you could just not develop as a person at all for the rest of your life. And that to me, I mean, you know, I, I whatever you want to do with your life is fine, but I, there's nothing more pathetic to me than someone who just kind of throws in the towel on like growing as a human. Well, it's it's I think I don't I don't know. I don't think it's like a conscious thing for a lot of people and I think a lot sure. I think it's 90% probably fear based. It's like you know, you go you do try Krav Maga, and the first class sucks, and yeah, so it makes fair fun enough. of you. But then you try a new thing. Exactly, but that's the thing. You just said you, you said yeah. earlier you had great parents who were probably I'm like, very Alex, lucky. get back up yeah. and get out I'm very there. aware that I was you know, get, encouraged and, my whole life. You yeah. know what? To answer your question, my the one major regret, I just wish I started sooner. Yeah. You know, too. I didn't really start doing mics until I was 24, and I didn't get really serious, serious till 26. And you kind of, did you do the thing, like, I, like, hemmed and hawed for, like, a year and a half. I was like, I write a, maybe I'll write five minutes, and I always tell people if they're like i'm like if you're thinking about it just do a mic tomorrow. right so my thing was like before i found that open mic at that hookah spot i didn't it didn't even occur to me like how to get into stand-up i didn't even it just seemed like someone being like oh i'll just get into the nfl like it was just so far away 100%. from me and then i see the mic and i'm like oh so i do that mic bomb it up but i was like let me keep trying but i would i would get discouraged really quickly because 
you know, it's a mic when you're new. You don't know what you're doing. You're yeah. eating shit. And then I was this thing like, this is taking all this time. I got to drive. I got to park. I got to buy a drink to be allowed to perform. Nobody's paying attention to me. And I would like do a couple mics, quit for a month, be like, no, this isn't, I, I got to get back at it. Yeah. Get on a bringer show, cash in my friend group. They would come see me. The show was terrible. They're like, okay, that was interesting. And then yeah. get discouraged. And you and know, that's you, a process. It's you, like, you a, just got to get hit in the face over yeah. and over again until you get numb to it. Yeah. And I think that's like, it's isn't it weird too, like how you now that you've done stand up for a while, anything else you start, you now have kind of like a little bit of a blueprint. Absolutely. Of like one hundred percent. That's how I feel. And it also, you know what stand up has really helped me with is processing failure. Yeah, big time. Absolutely. From everything from Or being embarrassed. nothing embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> it's dude, especially with like girls. If I say something oh, yeah. ridiculous or I embarrass myself, it's like whatever. Of course. You know? I do it all the time. Eh. Oh, we should be like that at this point in our lives. Absolutely. Well, what an honor! And a, what an honor and a pleasure for me, dude. Alex. Thank you, yeah, man. man. I can't wait to uh, share this with the world. Yeah, we'll probably be out later tonight. Probably by the time you're in New York, this thing will probably be out. Hell yeah, man. <laughs> well, Will, if you're ever back in LA, you know, you know it. You're man. always welcome to crash gonna, my place. I, I keep, I've, I keep begging Alex just to move back to Boston because <laughs> he because he put together good shows and yeah. there's still great shows here. But I mi- I miss the Gatlin joints. Yeah, I do too. I get nostalgic when I'm back, but well. Yeah. Hey, life is long. We'll we'll may live in the same city again one day. Yeah, hell yeah. But uh, sure. as long as you're in Boston, come back and do this podcast. Oh yeah, man. Hey, brother. It's a pleasure. All Thank right, you. man. All right. And remember, if no one told you they love you today, I do. As well as I do. And so does Alex G Dog. Yes. Oh, we never even fucking mentioned Alex G and Papa once. Oh yeah. Which I almost think. <laughs> well now. <laughs> would be perfect if we didn't. But what's just. Yeah, yeah. Should we? No, let's tell a story. Okay, okay. All right, so Alex, I saw Alex Gatlin, who's here at a show earlier in the week, and I was like, how long are you in town for? Got to come over and do the podcast. And right. we like, maybe Saturday or Sunday, I had a bunch of shit to do. We were, like, planning it. Yeah. So this morning, I do this 10K thing. I get back. I'm a little fucked, a little loopy, I guess. Right. <laughs> and I take out my phone, and I text Alex GM Papa. Yeah. He's a different Alex who lives right. in Boston. And I'm like, you want to do this podcast today? And it's, it was, the conversation was so funny because it was kind of like vague enough that he would think I was just out of the blue. Yeah, like, why not? Right, yeah. And yeah, I come, come over. Yeah. And I talk to him all the time, too. Sure. So, like, he's a friend. So yeah. why wouldn't he think that? And, he, and then he was like something about this. Oh, I, you don't want, like, weed because he also sells weed. Right. I was like, I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even hide. I go, all this was meant for Alex Gatlin. Yeah. But then I was like, but why don't you both come? Right. And uh, You got busy or something? He's just such a pothead. He, he I, texted I, me the same message. Like, you screenshotted yeah. it to me, and then he screenshotted it immediately after. Isn't that, it wasn't it was, as funny as fuck, though. Yeah, it was hilarious. It was so funny. And the funniest part is because there was one time years ago at Nick's where he got booked on accident. Yeah. It was meant for me. Yeah, he wanted. He said he was going to tell that story. And that, yeah. that has happened so many times. It's happened to Will uh, Smalley and me. It's happened yeah. to uh, Matt Kona and Matt D. It's, That's so funny, dude. It's one of those things. Yeah. It's, it's an old school business. But Alex G and Papa coming soon yeah. on Hypothetical. All right. All right. All right, dude. Thanks again, uh, man. Thanks again, brother. Yeah. Catch me if you can, <laughs> goddammit. Catch me if you can. You hear me?